In this video, we're talking the most beautiful lizard in the world. The panther chameleon. Panther chameleons are some of the most unique animals in the entire world. First thing you'll notice is their unique eyes. These guys can independently move each eye from any direction that they want. They can focus on two different things at one time. They can rotate each eye up to 180 degrees. They can look at you and they can look at me at the same time. The only time they really focus both eyes is when they're hunting because they need both eyes to get proper depth perception. Another unique thing you will notice on panther chameleons is their feet. These guys have perfectly evolved to live in the trees and branchy areas. Those feet are made to grit branches. For those of you who have ever tussled with an adult male panther chameleon or any of the bigger chameleon species, these guys are almost impossible to get off some branches. Another unique feature on these guys is their prehensile tail. So this tail, whenever it feels like a branch or anything, it'll just wrap around. The reason they do that is for safety. So if they fall or lose their grip, this tail can hold its entire body. I've seen them fall in the cages many times and just catch themselves on these tails. So an adult male panther chameleon can get pretty big, so you want to make sure you have the appropriate cage size for that animal. We like to use a four foot tall cage by two foot wide and two foot deep. That is like the standard or I would say like the minimum that you would use for an adult male panther chameleon. But you also want to make sure that if you are able to get something a little bit bigger, they're always going to be able to use that size of enclosure. Now whenever you keep an enclosure this big, it does you no justice if you just have four sticks laying around. You want to fill this whole enclosure up with a lot of plants and branches that the chameleon can climb in and also because the chameleon is going to want to go and you know get away from the heat or get to places where it's going to be more humid. As we mentioned, you like to make the enclosure very dense. Chameleons come from trees, they, they live in a rainforest, they like that density. So, and not only does it help you get out of the heat, but it also helps retain humidity, which is something that can be kind of annoying to do if you use a screen cage, which is what we use for our panther chameleons. Since we do keep these guys outside, we really don't have to worry about humidity too much. South Florida is already very, very humid as it is. We also have a misting system on all of our outdoor animals to just make it easier on us. But if you do house these guys inside, which most of you will, you do need a misting system, a fogger, or a mister. You need something that's going to retain the humidity and it's going to keep it high. Doing it indoors in AC in a screen cage is going to dry up very quickly. So you do want the misting system to run at least two to three to even four times a day that is the entire day not just when the sun's out or when the lights are on but also at night chameleons benefit very much from nighttime mistings okay. for indoor keeping you want the hot spot to be about 85 to 90 degrees these guys don't like it very very hot they must be able to escape the heat you want that to be the hottest part of the hottest spot of the cage now the rest of the cage can be anywhere in the room temperature 75 is good even if it drops into the 60s at night that's very fine for these guys and when it comes to UVB lighting, it is very, very important when you're keeping your chameleons indoors to have the proper UVB lighting system. Now, what you could use is the 5.0 UVB or the 6%. And typically, you want to make sure that the range where the chameleon from the light to the chameleon, it's about 6 inches. Anywhere lower than that, it's going to decrease the amount of UVB that the animal gets. And anywhere closer than 6 inches, it's going to actually produce too much UVB for the chameleon and it could actually burn their skin or could cause other problems so it is important that you grab the proper output for UVB and you have the proper distance between the bulb and the branches where the chameleons are, are basking now chameleons don't drink water out of a water bowl so you're gonna want to make sure you have a dripping system or a misting system that goes off in the nighttime or right before their lights come on during the day sometimes you could put it on towards the day too especially if you're in an inside a home where the all the humidity gets sucked out but this is the main way they're gonna stay hydrated do not provide a water bowl because they won't drink out of it by far one of the most common questions we get is how often or how do I handle my panther chameleon? Panther chameleons are one of the best chameleons for handling. That doesn't mean that you can handle them every day. There's some individuals that you can handle pretty frequently without stressing them out. There's others that are very finicky, very scared, running away. They'll puff up a lot if they're pissed that you know if you're coming at them. So those you don't want to handle very often. You wanna 
ease into taming them. You don't want to do it super hard right away. Just try to handle them. Like, no, you want to ease into it. You want to, first thing I like to do is kind of get them to associate me with food. So I'll try some tongue feeding, some hand feeding and slowly build a bond from there. Now, when I want to handle a panther chameleon, don't just go and grab them. That's going to stress them out. They're going to get really pissed. They're going to try to bite you. Generally, what I like to do is come from the bottom and scoop them up, kind of like a bird. For those of you out there who have birds, kind of a similar concept. You kind of grab them and then just lift them up a little bit and they'll kind of walk onto your hands. Then once they're on your hand, you want to do something called hand walking. For some of them, they're just going to sit there and just kind of hang out, explore. But others, like I said, the ones who don't really want to be handled too much, they're going to be, they're going to move around a lot. This is one that doesn't like to be handled a lot and I'll show you how we do it. So as I'm getting closer, you can see this guy is starting to run away. You see him pissed off right there. So when he puffs up like that, chin out, turn sideways, that's kind of a warning like, hey, if you come any closer, I will strike you. Most of the time it is a bluff strike, so they'll open their mouth and just kind of hit you with their head but sometimes they can and will bite so I'm just trying to get under him really quick there you go just scoop him up see like that he just tried to bite me but again it was a bluff he just hit me with his head so when i'm handling these chameleons keep in mind that their hands are kind of made for grabbing branches so I, instead of branches because i don't have those in my hands i use my fingers as branches i'll kind of instead of like a gecko where you just have your hand open like this i kind of space it out a little bit so they can grab you know my middle finger my index finger whatever finger it wants to grab so like i said sometimes they'll stand still sometimes they'll start walking a lot and like i said i like to hand walk these guys you see he might be moving around a lot but he's not pissed off he's not flaring up at me He's not, he's not doing any of that. And I like to do this every now and then for a couple minutes, not too long of a time when I'm trying to tame these guys, just because I don't want to stress them out too much. So short period of time, I'll handle them and then I'll put them back right into his enclosure. But you can see here, he's not stressed at all. He's not pissed, he's not angry. He's just kind of checking everything out, making sure everything's okay. Now check this out guys, you see this chameleon here, this one has been habituated for a lot more time than that one. So you can see that one's a little bit more frantic, kind of like running up his hands and, and hand walking a lot quicker. Sometimes they'll even puff up, you know, their throat or they'll even, you know, like just like attempt to bite you or open up their mouth, they'll gape. A chameleon that's relaxed is just kind of gonna stay there gonna chill gonna be looking around his throat's not gonna be puffed up and he's not gonna be in any hurry to move away from you because he understands that we're not trying to hurt him one of the signs that a chameleon is stressed and frankly something that you want to stay away from is if you have a chameleon in your hands and it has both its eyes closed if, it, if a chameleon is just staying still and not and closing its eyes and not looking around there's a problem with that chameleon and you usually don't want to go for a chameleon like that these chameleons even if it's kind of scared or if he's kind of relaxed he still should have his eyes looking everywhere and he shouldn't just you know close his eyes so keep an eye out for the eyes of the chameleons is one of their best health indicators that they have another great health indicator that we use a lot is their grip now generally a chameleon especially a chameleon with size will have a good grip now once they kind of get habituated to you their grip isn't always as strong but if the animal has a very weak grip can't hold itself up that is a sign of an unhealthy chameleon and something you do want to stay away from this guy right here has a good grip nice pinch good nails so that those are all telltale signs of a healthy happy chameleon so panther chameleons are from the island of Madagascar and these guys are some of the most beautiful lizards in the world. The males get all these crazy psychedelic patterns and colors. The females aren't as colorful but they're still very beautiful and they'll have colors of like a pink to purple. They don't get as big as the males. This guy here is massive. These guys are going to live for about five to seven years in captivity. The females can sometimes live less than that because they produce eggs and that could take a big toll on their body sometimes they don't even need a male to produce eggs this panther chameleon here will cost you anywhere from 450 to 500 dollars as an adult male the babies you could find as cheap as 250 dollars to 350 dollars with the females being about a hundred dollars cheaper most of the time chameleons are insectivores that means they don't eat any veggies they don't eat any fruits they only eat insects now one of the most recognizable traits of a chameleon is its tongue. Chameleons have a tongue that is about one and a half to two times their body length and that's what they use to snipe 
crickets, or any insects from across the cage. Now, when you're feeding insects like crickets or worms, it is super important that you dust them with calcium. Now, calcium comes in two forms, with D3 or without D3. When you're feeding chameleons, you wanna make sure that you provide calcium with D3 about two or three times a month, and always dust them with calcium without D3. Most insect feeders do not have the proper calcium to phosphorus ratio, so you wanna add that extra calcium when you're feeding it to them. Another important feature about feeding chameleons insects is gut loading your insects, and gut loading just means that you're going to feed your chameleon a varied diet of veggies and fruits, that way they get all the nutrition through the insect to directly to your chameleon. Baby and juvenile chameleons you're going to want to feed every single day as much as they'll eat But once they get to an adult size you don't want your guys to get obese or overweight So you're going to feed every other day or about four to five times a week now I typically feed about four to five crickets for my adults if it's something higher in fat like some super worms I'll even do like three or four super worms now if you're an aspiring chameleon owner, you gotta make sure that you get a captive bred panther chameleon. Honestly, the wild caught panther chameleons are best for the expert breeders or expert keepers. If it's your first chameleon, you wanna make sure you get a captive bred chameleon. They're gonna cost a little bit more, but it's going to be well worth it in the end because that chameleon is gonna be more habituated to people and most importantly, it's not gonna have all the stresses and possible parasites and problems that a wild panther chameleon might have. Also, if you guys are interested in purchasing a panther chameleon, we do frequently have them available, including the ones that you saw today. A lot of those will be made available on our website, tikisgeckos.com, so make sure you check them out. Make sure you also check out all of our social media platforms. We post panthers and everything else we have on all the platforms. We have Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok. We have it all. If there's a social media out there, we have it. All the same name, Tiki's Geckos. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.